Okay, kiddos, I thought I would help you out with some homework. This is going to be mainly from assignment 12, um, which is begins on page 124 of the older version of the book. You'll pick up on these problems if you happen to have the, uh, the newer version. This is going to be some frequency, wavelength, and energy problems. So I'm going to put a couple equations up on the top here. Do you, do you recall that lambda times nu equals the speed of light? Now we can derive a couple of other equations from this one. Wouldn't lambda, the wavelength, be c divided by nu, the frequency? Or you could say that nu, the frequency, is equal to c over lambda. Okay, we just derived these two from the original. Recall that c, the speed of light, is a constant. And to three significant figures, that 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. All the physicists at the school prefer 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So if you need a fourth sig fig, there you go. You've got it. Okay? Now, uh, once again, we'll start on page 124 of the blue textbook. And we'll do number 10 first. And let's try to keep this sort of kind of simple. Um, on number 10, I give you the wavelength. And I ask you to solve for the frequency. So frequency, if I'm solving for frequency, is C divided by the wavelength. So if you read the question, I do give you the wavelength. Of course, it's in centimeters. So we're going to have to massage that a little bit so the units work. So let's set this up. C goes on top. 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And we're dividing by wavelength. That means we're going to put that on the bottom. And that is 4.257 times 10 to the negative 7th centimeters. Now, if you look, this is probably one instance where I should have used uh, four significant figures in my speed of light because I give you the wavelength of four sig figs. <laughs> and my constant's only the three when I actually could have used four, but oh well, we'll deal with it. Do you notice here, folks, this is what I was trying to emphasize um, in the first video for this chapter, meters and centimeters don't cancel out right away. So what we need to do is put centimeters on top so they do divide out, and we'll put meters on the bottom so that they can divide out. Now we have to know the conversion factor, of course, and we should know that one meter has a hundred centimeters in it. So centimeters are gone, meters are gone, I'm unitless on top, so we're just going to say the unit of one, and I have seconds on the bottom. One over seconds, we're using that as cycles per second, um, which is a unit of frequency. So let's see what we get here. Uh, we'll clear this out. We have three second e e to the eighth divided by 4.257 second e e to the negative seventh times 10 carat key 2. And so I get 7.05, I'm only allowed three sig figs, remember, times 10 uh, to the 16th. So 7.05 times 10 to the 16th. And that would be my frequency in cycles per second. Don't make this any harder than it is. It's pretty straightforward, isn't it? All right, let's do number 11. And on number 11, this time I want to determine the energy. Now we need to give you another equation here. I didn't get to this in video number one. We're going to get to it right now, okay? Uh, the next equation is E equals H times nu, or the frequency. Or another way to write that is E, the energy, equals H. And since nu is the same as C over lambda, we could say C over lambda. So either one of these work for us to calculate energy. H is a constant called Planck's constant or Planck's constant, depending upon who your teacher is. And uh, C is the velocity of light. So these two are constants in this equation, and that one's a constant there. So let's take a look on number 11. I want to find the energy, and I give you the frequency. So we're going to go energy equals h times the frequency. Now Planck's constant, 
is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds per photon of light. Now we're going to multiply that by uh, the frequency, and the frequency given is 3.55 times 10 to the 17th hertz. Now remember the hertz, we're going to use 1 over seconds for that. Now take a look, seconds divide out. And we're going to have joules per photon when we're all done. So joules per photon. So let's take a look and see what we end up with here. 6.626 second EE negative 34th times 3.55 second EE to the 17th. And we end up with a very small amount of energy. We wouldn't expect it to be a lot of energy. It's one measly photon. In fact, physicists say that those pesky little photons are massless. That's how tiny they are. So let's say I have three sig figs here, 2.35 times 10 to the negative 16th joules per photon. Okay? All right. So number 12 is next. And I don't want to do the whole thing for you. In fact, if you uh, look at the equations at the top of the page that I gave you, 12 actually was already answered for you. And then number 13, um, this one's a little bit deceiving. It's asking for how long it would take for a radio wave that has a certain frequency to travel from Earth to Mars. And I give you the distance. Now I'm going to ask you to be really careful on this because you're going to want to, well, you're going to want to use some of these equations up here and you don't need to. So look at the unit analysis. You are given distance and the speed of light and you want to find time, how long it takes to get somewhere. So there's, a, there, there's some information in there that you might not be using to help you with problem 13. So think about that. Okay? And then the last problem from the textbook before we get into the other problems is number 14 and it says cobalt is an artificial radioisotope that is a gamma ray source in the treatment of certain types of cancer. If the wavelength of gamma radiation is 1.00, so lambda is 1.00 times 10 to the negative third nanometers, calculate the energy. So we want to find the energy here. So we're going to flash up here. And do you see how I can use this equation, E equals HC over the wavelength, to solve for that? So I'm going to set you up on this one, but not quite finish it. So E, oh, I'm not writing on the camera, am I? E equals HC over lambda. Now H is Planck's constant. Remember, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds per photon. We'll multiply that by the speed of light, uh, 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So you can see seconds have divided out already. And we're going to divide by the wavelength. Now my wavelength is 1.00 times 10 to the negative third nanometers. I gave that to you right there, folks. And meters and nanometers don't play well together, do they? So, we need to add another step. We'll hop out of nanometers and get into meters. One meter is a billion nanometers. So now nanometers are gone and meters are gone. Notice I have joules per photon as my unit. And I'm going to let you finish this one on your own. Okay, you can plug and chug, I'm sure. Alright, now we have some other problems. So I didn't find enough in the textbooks. I wanted to give you guys a few more. So other problem one, I want you to find frequency and I'm giving you wavelength. So if I want you to find frequency and I'm giving you wavelength, wouldn't that be C divided by the wavelength? And I'm going to do letter A for you and I'll let you uh, take care of B and C on your own. So if we're going to solve for frequency, we'll take the speed of light three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And we're going to go ahead and divide by 
the wavelength that I give you, 4.2 times 10 to the negative fifth centimeters. See, meters and centimeters don't play well together, do they? So we need to add a step, put centimeters on top and meters on the bottom. You better know that in a meter there are 100 centimeters. So notice that centimeters are gone and so are meters. We are unitless on top and we have seconds on the bottom. So let's see what we get here, okay? Let's clear the others out. 3 second ee e to the eighth divided by 4.2 second ee e to the negative fifth times 100 or 10 squared if you wish and I get 7.14 times 10 to the 14 cycles per second. And then if you look at the key for the other problems, I often give you the answer. If you look at the key, uh, that's the answer that I give you. Make sure that the setup is showing. You can't just write the answer down and expect to get some credit. That ain't going to happen. Okay, let's take a look at other problem number two. And on other problem number two, this time I want you to solve for the wavelength, then I give you the frequency. So wouldn't wavelength be equal to C over the frequency? Sure it would. So let's take a look. Let me give you, let me do letter B for you. So A, you're on your own. I'll do B. So for letter B, um, I give you the frequency. And so we are going to take the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And we're going to divide by the frequency I give you. And the frequency is 4.07 times 10 to the 15th. Now remember the unit for frequency is 1 over seconds. So when you're dividing by it, sophomores, seconds go on top. Okay, so now seconds can divide out and I'm left with meters. And normally you'd be done, but I ask for the answer in nanometers. So we're going to hop out of meters and get into nanometers. One meter has a billion nanometers in it. So you can see we have nanometers left over. Let's see what we get. 3 second ee to the eighth divided by 4.07 uh, second ee to the fifteenth times 10 carat key 9. I end up with 73.7 nanometers and that is uh, once again to three significant figures. Uh, letter C, I think you guys can handle on your own. Okay, let's hop down to number three now. And number three, I want the energy in joules. So we're going to use one of two equations. Remember, energy is equal to H, Planck's constant, times the frequency, or energy is equal to H times C over lambda. Remember, C over lambda is the same as frequency. So I can use either of these equations. Let's see what I'm going to use on letter A. On letter A, I give you the frequency. So we're going to use this equation. So H, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds per photon. We're going to multiply it by the frequency that's given. And that is 5.06 times 10 to the 14th. And remember that unit is 1 over seconds. So seconds divide out and we're left with joules per photon. And I'll let you finish that on your own. Letter B, I give you the wavelength in nanometers. So let's go ahead and use that equation. So we still have H, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds per photon and this time we have the speed of light 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second and we're going to divide by the wavelength that I give you which is 388 nanometers let's do a unit analysis here seconds are gone but meters and nanometers do not divide out so we'll add a step so we can get out of nanometers and into meters one meter is a billion nanometers. So now nanometers are gone, meters are gone, and once again we're left with joules per photon. Okay? Alright, 
Uh, numbers 4 and 5 are going to be extra credit, and I'd rather not give you any help on those. So take a look at 4 and 5. I think you guys can handle it. It takes a little bit of problem solving to, to take care of, but it'll be uh, a good bonus problem for you folks, or problems for you folks. All right, I hope this helped out a ton. See you guys in class. Bye-bye.